Hey everybody, welcome to the video. My name is Javelin and today I'm going to talk about seven things I'd like to see in the future of Elden Ring along with a couple honorable mentions. This is the first video of the channel so subscribe for more content, toss it a like and comment down below. Now without any further delay, let's get started. First up we have difficulty. So the first run in 30 hours into Elden Ring is pretty difficult, but I feel like with this game being the pinnacle of From Software's games, honestly it could be more challenging. Take DSR, Sekiro, and Bloodborne for instance. Each boss has some type of resistance to something, and individual enemies are well placed, but the difficulty doesn't feel forced. You have to really think about your next move and watch your stamina, or you suffer the consequences. With Elden Ring it felt like my stamina bar was sort of infinite, and I was only worried about timing a roll as opposed to, oh, I need to back off to regenerate my stamina, mostly because the stamina bar felt like it regenerated too quickly. I have a couple things in mind I think would make the difficulty in gameplay a bit more engaging. Number 1. Increasing stamina regen time for difficulty and make iframes tighter so if you don't time the roll correctly, you take some of, if not an entire hit's worth of damage. Number 2. Making enemies have more health and a bit more resistance and have bosses feel more godlike. Number 3. Implement the parry system from Sekiro in a way that could either take stamina or chip off health if not timed correctly. Number 4. Make the weight system great again. By this I mean think Dark Souls. Your movements are slightly slower or faster based on how close you are to max capacity. Number 5. Implement Sekiro and Bloodborne's dodging mechanic as an aspect of the build choice. Like say you aren't heavy enough and have the fast roll. You can put on something like a talisman or an option at the grace to change your mechanic like in Dark Souls with the Dark Wood Grain Ring. You can have rolls exclusively or you can have dodges. I feel like these would really increase the game's potential for build variety if only by a small amount. Next on our list is number 2, Weapons and Magic. Suffice to say I'd like it if more of the basic weapons were a bit stronger and magic was a bit nerfed to level it out, which at this point it has been. There's a ton of melee build potential with the saturation of basic weapons, make the clay more great again, and nerfing magic would honestly be better and has been better for the PvE slash PvP environment considering you can one shot people with a decent amount of spells given the buffs you can use for spells. Another thing I'd like to mention, you guys remember in DS3 how you could choose what type of weapon you had, i.e. crystal, heavy, magic, standard, etc. It feels like they sort of just tossed that in and didn't give it much thought to how it could enhance the combat. I'd like to see that separated from Ashes of War. Finally, weapon gem slots. Like in Bloodborne, gems which are found or randomly dropped by enemies and vary based on the area. The better the gem, the lower the drop rate, and etc. So you'd have to invest in farming the areas to get better gems. The gem rarity could also be dictated by level, playthrough, and things of that nature. Number 3 on our list is Elden Bling. This next one ties in with the socketing feature. It'd be great to see more options to customize our armor with dyes, gems, and armor variant options. It honestly really refined the individuality aspect while heightening the build experience with gems. Sort of like in Bloodborne with the weapons, or Diablo with literally gem sockets. Imagine not only having the talismans and armor effects, but also a gem in your weapon and armor specific to an Ash of War, weapon type, armor type, magic type, or incantation type. Maybe even having a rod or poison build up or resistance. All I'm saying is I love that feature in Bloodborne, so it'd be a welcome return. Fourth on the list is Covenants. Honestly, I didn't feel like this would be a big one for me, but it really, really is. I enjoyed the Covenant system in the Soul series a lot because I felt like I was part of something greater than myself, and I had an allegiance that if broken would have consequences that were minor or major, like certain characters would attack you or the leaders of the Covenants would have additional dialogue. This could also help with PvP because you could literally get items like in the Soul series exclusive to the Covenants and deepen your rank and get Covenant specific abilities, spells, enchantments, and etc. But unlike in Souls where you get to keep everything you gain from the Covenant, in Elden Ring some items would go away when to leave or betray the Covenant. On top of invading being more personal and necessary to gain rank, they could also attach trophies and achievements to this which would keep the world saturated for multiple playthroughs and add an extra layer to the trophy system. 
Make the covenant of champions for those like me who crave difficulty. I'd appreciate it. Also, has anybody seen the sun in Elden Ring? Taking the fifth spot is expanding the crafting system. To say the least, players are about 50-50 or 60-40 on utilizing the crafting system from what I've seen online in groups and forums. I want to suggest they add more complexity to the crafting system while keeping it just as accessible, like giving the merchants unlimited supplies of certain things in the surrounding areas, because they go foraging, and that would make sense as to why they have so much of the item selection. But some ingredients to some recipes would be more rare and you would have to farm for them. They have a low spawn rate or like with boss remembrances you have to choose between a few recipes to make with it due to the ingredient being rare. And if you want to duplicate it you have to go to a location akin to the wandering mausoleums. Like some sort of garden type area that's scarce in the lands between. This could add an interesting element and maybe even new enemies slash enemy types to the game. While hunting for all these ingredients and areas, it could not only keep the world saturated with players, but also give the game another aspect of the crafting system, making it feel more ingrained and necessary in the world. At number 6 we have Torrent. This one's sorta of short, but important. I feel like Torrent, although being our valuable and faithful steed, isn't given enough of a spotlight. Giving him abilities in different kinds of saddles, or armor, or something of the likeness to Witcher 3, could enhance certain aspects of the riding experience. It would honestly be fantastic if I could have a higher jump, triple jump, faster running, increased health, or some sort of poise mechanic implemented on him. Maybe even changing his hair color or how many horns he has, giving him a more personal aspect special to the player. Perhaps a DLC where we visit the land which his race is from, because let's be honest, that would be interesting. He's our faithful companion after all. He deserves respect, deeper lore, and more. Lastly, at number 7, we have PvP. Finally, and this is what everyone wants, not just me, I'd like to see those Colosseums opened up. Having 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, and 4v4 with variants of those choices would be excellent for the overall experience of the game, while also giving the Covenants topic I spoke about earlier in the video a sort of centralized aspect to farm the Covenant exclusive items. They could also use this as a means to add another storyline to the game, where you rise to be the champion of the lands between. There could be a pot option like with card games, and the pot grows the more people that come in. You set the wager in the pot, and then battle for the runes. Whoever wins gets the pot, or it's split amongst the winners. Tournaments could be held, an event board out in front of the Colosseums, community growth, and all that would really get this game up there with player saturation. On to the honorable mentions. Our first honorable mention is cutting off Dragon Tales. This is by far one of the greatest features in a video game ever, and what actually made me continue the games to find out how many other enemies tails I could cut off, and what weapons I got from them. The fact that I had to specifically not die and rethink my strategy to cut this dragon's tail off to get a weapon was a boost to morale like no other. It's such a unique experience. This feature really had gusto, and I personally don't care what size the dragon or enemy is, I want that tail weapon no matter what I have to go through to get it. My second honorable mention is the return of Mimics. I liked the subtle nod with the traveling chests, but I loved the surprise of what I thought was a chest filled with valuable loot, to instead be greeted by arms grabbing me and then ate by a horrendous creature and made to start from the last bonfire. Alright guys, this has been 7 things for a better Elden Ring, and sorry about my voice, I recently came down with an upper respiratory infection and the clinic didn't prescribe me with any antibiotics, so there's that. If you made it to the end, you have my thanks. Like the video, comment your thoughts down below, and subscribe for more content. I'll have a link to the discord either in the video description or comments that you can join where you can post ideas and start discussions. I'm also going to start streaming soon. I think I'm going to give Sekiro another go for the first game I stream on YouTube. I have a Twitter, Instagram, Facebook page, and I may eventually start a TikTok, to which I'll post shorts and share general ideas as well as some funny stuff. I'm Javelin, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.